You may already know how to zoom into a Blender scene by simply modifying the position of your camera. For example, if the camera is closer to the object, it will look bigger. And if it is away from the target object, it will look like zoomed out. But a zoom operation in this way is not always suitable. The first issue is, it does not look natural. When we perform a zoom operation in a real camera, we do that by adjusting the lens in the camera. We don't really take the camera closer to the object physically. And the second issue arises when your camera is already following a different path and you do not want to disturb that movement. If you need to simultaneously zoom in or zoom out, you have to look for some alternative way. So in this tutorial, we will learn a different technique to perform the camera zoom operation dynamically by using the focal length of the camera object. Right now, we are in the 3D viewport. We'll first fix the camera position. Let us set this Y location as minus 40, and we won't change that. Then, in the camera view mode, we can see all these objects at a certain distance. While the camera is selected, go to the camera tab. You will see one field called focal length here. If you change this value, you can easily achieve the zoom in or zoom out action, just like before. This gives a natural look, and it is similar to a real camera operation. Your camera can even simultaneously move along any path, it is free to move while we zoom in. But this field is very sensitive, so when you change this field, you can press the shift key for a better control over the focal length. It's easy and flawless. And the good thing is, you can even keyframe this value for changing it dynamically in an animation. So for frame number 1, let us change the focal length to the default 50 and we'll keyframe it. Then we'll go to frame number 80, and we can change it to some lower value, maybe 20, to get a zoomed out view. And keyframe it as well. Let us say we then go to frame number 200. We will now zoom into the scene with 70. The objects may look distorted if you use a very high value or a very low value, so try to follow some mid-range. Finally, we'll go back to 50 mm. If we now play the animation from the beginning, we'll see that the camera first zooms out. Then it zooms in to the target objects, very close to them. And then it again zooms out. So you can use this technique in those situations where you need to perform a zoom operation without moving your camera from its location or its path. You can even use both the techniques together. For a successful animation, you must have an absolute control on how your camera moves through the scene. So this was a quick tip on dynamic zoom. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.